For today's session, we have with us uh, Ayush Tuteja, Product Manager at Baijit. He brings in seven, uh, uh, six plus years of experience. Earlier, he was working as senior business analyst and also data analyst uh, roles at companies like uh, Soroco and New Sigma. And then he transitioned to a product management role. Uh, so with that floor, let's begin the session. And I, in, uh, I request Ayush to just introduce himself and let's get started with the session. Thank you, Priyanka. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining the session. Hope uh, your next 45 to 50 minutes are fruitful and you get to learn something from this session. I'll quickly share my screen. Hope it's visible to all of you. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. So um, uh, as Priyanka said, I almost come with six years of experience in data analytics. A um, little bit into pre-sales and business analy analytics. Um, I also had some startup experience. I co-founded a startup when uh, right after college, and um, that that's something uh, about my background. So I understand most of you here are either business analyst or data analyst, um, right? I hope I stand correct. So how we are going, uh, we are planning to go over the session is, um, we'll start with some introspection. We'll try and understand what are the skill sets that you have um, as a business analyst. Then we'll understand who's a product manager, uh, what do they do, how, how does their day look like? And um, together we'll solve a case study very quickly on, on, on a given product challenge. And then, we will talk about the skill sets of a product manager and then try and bridge the gap between skill sets of a BA, a business analyst and a product manager and see what other additional skill sets need to be developed for a BA to transition into a product management role. Um, then I'll talk about my transition story, how I did it, what are the challenges I faced, uh, things that I could have done better or uh, things that I should not have done at all. And then, uh, fortunately, I have a list of all the interview questions that I was asked uh, while I was interviewing across um, 12, 13 plus organizations. And I think that'll be useful. And then we can take your questions. So to start with, can all of you just list your skills in the chat, things that you think you do on a daily basis? It can be data analytics. It can be uh, requirement gathering, anything. Uh, what we'll do is we'll list this skill, we'll list the skills, and then later on the session we'll map it on how you can position these skills to be a product manager. So it'll be great if you folks can take the next um, 60 to 100 seconds and just list your skills in the chat below. Yeah, Lokesh says requirement gathering, user stories, backlog, BRDs, Scrum, okay. Backlog requirement, requirement management. Couple wire frames, yeah. Jira skills. Yeah. Nice. So I think we have got quite a few answers. Um, cool. So business, and thanks for answering folks, this, this will help us uh, later in the session to um, map your transition journey to a product manager. Um, so business analyst is an umbrella term which is thrown across the industry and mostly like I haven't, I haven't really met two business analysts who do the same thing. It's different across organization, industries, verticals. Um, there are basically three kind and I think I'm sure you know it better than me because most of you are business analysts. Uh, there are process business analysts who are less into IT and more into improving processes of a company or organization. Then there's system business analysts, people who help with 
migrations integrations uh, understand people's uh, understand company's problem talk to the engineers and understand what can be done and there are business analysts who are more towards the data side who would write queries build dashboards um do those kind of things understand uh, a few metrics etc um as most of you mentioned uh, right now i think a lot of your skills do map in these th- in these boxes here uh, a ba is supposed to understand the business objectives extremely important you need to think critically um you need to have excellent communication and interpersonal skills while you need to have decision making skills um talking about dashboarding and creating reports it is you know more towards business analysts who are data oriented and then it's great to have some sql knowledge you need to document as a business analyst day in day out because that's how you communicate with engineers with other stakeholders and definitely stakeholder management uh this is this is ex, you know extremely important so uh i i hope you resonate with the skill set that a normal business analyst has and you might have you know anywhere between 50 to 100% of these skill sets uh so if this is so then you know uh, going forward the session will be useful to you okay next uh, question is who is a product manager what do they do um ca- can all of you just think for 30 seconds and write something in the chat as well uh, again uh, as business analyst even product manager or product management is an umbrella term different companies use it differently uh, which might mean other things in different companies so if you could just write what do you think is a product manager uh that'll be great we can take the next 30 seconds 30 or 40 seconds and it's okay you can be wrong so it's it's fine uh who do you think is the is the product manager location abhishek thank you so much so uh, while i was preparing for this session um i thought you know let us go and get some bookish definition of who is a product manager and i came across multiple product manager definitions across wikipedia um uh, confluence atlassian what not uh so so this term is used differently in different companies uh and when you start applying for jobs you will see that the um that the job requirement or the jd document wants different thing from a product manager frankly um but in the end a product manager is a person who is given a business requirement and that person needs to understand the customer and the other business objectives and come up with a product or feature as simple as that while managing everything now um product management as a stream has become very popular in the last 2 3 years but it's not the case that product management never existed it has existed since 2008 2007 in silicon valley but in india with you know startups booming and everything um product management as a job role is extremely visible there's no structure around it and uh, more and more money is flowing into this uh, job role um you know as a matter of fact nasco wants to train some 55000 product managers uh, in india in the next 5 years so there's a dearth of product managers and people still don't un- exactly understand what they are um a lot of you mentioned i mean in the answers that a product manager is someone who takes end to end ownership divine, define vision of a product product road mapping work towards value generation of a product that that's true i think all of your answers are true it's a bigger umbrella uh a, an apm or a product manager who has let's say one or two years of experience would usually work in in more of a um executionary domain while as you keep growing you would become more and more uh you, you would go more and more into decision making and uh, more and more into road mapping and understand where does your company or where does your product needs to go um and okay so i think this was just a uh, bookish definition 
Um, a lot of people say that product manager is the CEO of product. That's true and that's not true as well. Um, you have, as a product manager, you have no one uh, who would report to you. Uh, and more often than not, you're answerable to the leadership all the time. So you're definitely not the CEO with no perks. Um, a product manager is definitely someone who works in tandem with uh, with tech team, with the design team, with the business team. And the business team can be marketing, sales, uh, leadership, accounts, everything, right? Um, now, I think uh, a lot about what, what does a product manager do, who that is. Um, let, let's talk in detail about how does a day in a product manager's life look like? Or what are the different tasks that a product manager is supposed to do um, throughout his uh, working life or a working day, per se? So product manager is, is responsible to identify problems, what's going wrong, uh, what's not going right, um, and, then ident and then figure out or prioritize which problems to solve. Um, there are many, pro there are hundreds of problems out there, but you need to pick the best problem to solve. Then work with multiple teams, identify a solution. Um, and then once you have identified the solution, communicate it to the engineering team or other teams and build a solution around it, work with marketing and sales, launch it, and then collect a lot of feedback um, and, uh, and improve the product. So in a very simplistic way, this, this is what a product manager does. Um, it's, it's very high level. Uh, yeah, it's very high level. I think next, uh, what we'll do here is I'll open for, uh, if anyone has any questions, we can take questions for a minute or two and then move forward and solve a case here and um, understand how your skills map to a product's, product manager skills. If there are any questions, please shoot or just unmute yourself and you can ask it. Hi, uh, my name is Gaurav and I have a question. Yeah, Gaurav. Yeah, uh, I think uh, a lot of business analysts in the market these days, if you see, uh, mostly uh, work on either mature products or probably the products which are into B2B space. And you don't see, you don't see you don't see a lot of development happening in those products probably because they only uh, uh, you know live with the enhancements happening periodically. But say someone with such experience who have worked uh, with those mature products in the industry want to transition into a product management role uh, 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 in the B two C space. So what would be the transition strategy uh, for such a person uh, with prior experience? If you can speak a little bit on that. Sure. Um, I will cover this point in the later part of the presentation. So it's okay if I answer it maybe 10 minutes later. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks. Yeah. But, but to answer your question, I mean, to answer a little bit of your question, Gaurav. Uh, so I moved to a company where I'm getting the chance to work on products which are still not mature, where we're still figuring out product market fit for these products um, and experimenting, making and pulling the plug on new products daily. So it's, it's also about um, joining those organizations where uh, the product is still young in a nascent stage and they are still trying to figure out new revenue streams, basically products um or companies which have got a series a series b funding or which are just in the seed round or divisions of a company which are new for example i know a friend uh who joined the chatbot area of um, um of uh, angel broking angel broking is a large company but they were coming out with new chat systems so he's making a product from scratch so you know it kind of depends which company and which division are you joining in mostly but isn't isn't ayush uh just a just a quick check here uh, yes. no norm uh, but as, if you look at all these product managers or product owners job descriptions 
they explicitly call out stating that they need somebody who is two to three years or one to two years or two to five yeah. years of core product management experience. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what that's what I've seen recently across a lot of job openings which are happening, or I should say industry yeah. levels, yeah. in terms of asking for such expertise into it. Now, uh, assuming let's if if you have a huge experience into a BA work and you have never uh, let's say acted as a product manager, then how do we, how do as an individual get into that space? Because uh, because your years of experience are increasing, you are uh, exploring different domains, you know and understand different domains, but what you do not is how do you how do you get into that space? How do you move into saying that you have shattered as a product yeah. shattered as a product manager but not able to go through? I understand your question, Avishek. I had the same problem while I was trying to move. Um, all the JDs either wanted me to have an have a MBA from IM or ISB right. or wanted right. to come with five years of experience. Um, so the idea is, as a business analyst, you have done a lot of things. Uh, you have a lot of experience, and in, in, in your particular context, you have shadowed a product manager. So you showcase that experience as your as your experience that I have done this. Uh, whenever I used to go in an interview, uh, that my idea was I am not someone who's a business analyst and who wants to become a product manager. I am already a product manager, but who's working as a business analyst? If you can make people. Uh, believe in this your job's done because there's no course from where product managers come in uh, a lot of engineers turn into product managers and less designers everyone um, so i think in your interviews or in your strategy or you know while writing your resume you need to mention uh, things that you have done as a business analyst but something which a product manager also does uh, definitely you are a business analyst but you're a product manager who's disguised as a business analyst you have been a product manager but um, maybe just not with the role not with the designation so i think that's that's how you can uh, transition and that that's what i did and i'll cover you know most of these skill set that you can use in your resume a little later on so uh, yeah let this move forward and i hope i answered some bit of your question cool um, so here the idea is I want to talk about one or two examples and how does a product manager work across these different um, uh, life cycle stages. And while we are talking about this, what you'll realize is that you have done a lot of these things while being a business analyst or while being someone from sales or maybe any other place. And you have done tasks that a product manager already does. And maybe you need to come up with few new or uh, learn few more skills by which um, you can make a better product manager cv but the idea is for you to understand that you've already done a lot of things while we go and solve through this case um so one of the cases let's say swiggy wants to improve user retention right uh give me one second yeah so uh, here the idea is, let's say Swiggy wants to improve user retention. And this is something, I mean, these are the problems which are product managers or which multiple product managers they face on a daily basis. That's how work comes to you that, hey, this is a metric that's going down. Uh, we need to do something so that this metric gets up or hey, the sales are going really low in some part of the bank or how do we improve it or what's happening or um, attrition is high, how do we decrease it? for the product things like this so let's say someone comes up with hey swiggy wants to improve user retention okay so this is a i mean this is a random statement but what are the problems why is the user retention low um let's start with theme one identify the right problem um what's happening what is the problem are people not getting the right customer support while uh they, they're ordering are the rates too high in swiggy as compared to a competitor as zomato or um is the delivery taking too long or fourth is there a lot of uh, does a user need to do a lot of clicks to place an order so first thing is you try and identify what's the the problem what's actually the problem why are people dropping off and to do something like this you need to interact with customers who have already dropped off you need to take some customer interviews you need to do some surveys create surveys uh, uh, and then collect data um, do some data analysis, segment users. So this is where your analytics skills come into picture. This is where 
um, your interpersonal and communication skills come into picture that you want to identify a particular problem. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you as business analysts, you've already done this, where you talk to your customers and understand what has to be done and then document it. Okay, this is the problem. The customer might be saying the problem is A, but it's actually D, E, F or something else. Um, so in this Swiggy example, as I said, the retention is low. Maybe the problem is the rates are high or the delivery is slow, or uh, it takes too many clicks for a user to actually order a product or order something from Swiggy. Now, okay, let's say you see, okay, all these three are problems. Uh, the next thing as a product manager, what a product manager does is prioritizing it. Um, this is where a product manager um, earns his money, frankly. There are multiple product, there are multiple frameworks for prioritization. And um, uh, you use those frameworks to understand which is the first problem you want to solve, or which is the problem that will uh, create the largest impact. And here you really want to, uh, make sure that you have enough engineering bandwidth design bandwidth and the problem is not too huge to solve so that uh, you don't end up wasting resources um, once you prioritize a problem you usually talk to leadership different cxos if it's a small company and tell them hey this is the problem i want to solve uh, this is where a lot of stakeholder management comes in um, and a lot of documentation comes in uh, as well as reporting because your let's say chief marketing officer could be like, hey, the customer support uh, service sucks, improve that. Uh, maybe it does suck, but there's something else that you can solve quicker. Um, and that's maybe uh, introducing ways for someone to order quickly. Um, so all of this comes under prioritization. Um, next is, okay, you understood that, um, let's say it takes a lot of clicks in Swiggy for someone to order a particular dish. Um, there could be 100 solutions. A lot of people say that it's important for a product manager to come up with solutions, but no, that's not the case. It's extremely important to listen to con consumers and understand what they want, uh, talk to engineers and understand is this something that can be built, and, uh, and, then, and then run this solution, make an MVP, do some A-B testing to understand that, hey, this one solution that you have in mind, which might be, let's say, cutting a couple of screens so that someone can order faster, uh, is it even feasible? Uh, do people like it? Test it with the older screens or test it with two other options. This is where skills like A-B testing come in. Um, this is where skills like developing an MVP and running an MVP successfully comes in. Um, then next, once you have identified that, hey, this is the solution that I want to build, um, you really want to give it to engineers and designers. While the first thing is um, you need to know a few nomenclatures around uh, business process flows, uh, know a few tools like Figma, Miro, Draw.io, where you make a process flow and make your designer understand, hey, this is what I want exactly. Work with designers to maybe tweak the solution and then write a detailed documentation, which is known as a PRD, a product, uh, a PRD, so that your engineers understand what they need to build. Uh, this is again a lot of your amazing documentation skills, being meticulous to uh, detail skills come into picture. Um, once you have a solution in place or while your engineers are working, you really, or, or pro, what a product manager does is um, he or she would talk to marketing sales, legal team and make them understand that this is the new product or this is the new feature that we are introducing. Um, this is where this is what we are building. Uh, make some marketing collateral with them. Help them position the product better because you know what you have built, but your marketing and sales team, they really don't know what you have built. So enable them. And uh, once you launch the product, the next idea is to uh, measure and collect feedback. Uh, build a lot of analytics. Talk to consumers who are still not using your product and understand, hey, why are you not using the product? Or what can we improve? And deploy a lot of reports and dashboards to measure all of this, measure whatever you have built and fix bugs. And this life cycle continues. So uh, this is what a product manager does in and out. And um, while going through the flow, I mentioned terms like, you know, you need to make a PRD or you need to prioritize something, etc. Um, these are few of the technical or these are hard PM skills or core PM skills that people need to know when they go for an interview. Any questions till this point on this slide or on the flow? Uh, 
Uh, hi, Ayush, Lokesh, this side. Can you uh, explain us more about the frameworks that you mentioned? Like what kind of frameworks are generally used for prioritization? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll get into that. I have that in the next slide. Uh, any other questions? One question here. So, like if you say you have problem statement, right? Swiggy wants to improve user attention. WhatsApp uh, wants to increase the usage of WhatsApp payments. So, apart from uh, taking the service from the customers, listing down the problems, how do you, after prioritizing it, so how do you drill down the scenarios for each problem and prioritizing it? I mean, how do you come up with the scenarios is a question. So you get, uh, how do you come up with scenarios and how do you come up with the problems? Is that the case? Problem, or? I think service is one technique and uh, prioritizing the uh, service is one way, like you come up with a problem and you uh, do that. But how do you come up with, uh, say for example, Example, any uh, for one requirement, there might be five problems. And if you target each and every problem, prioritize it, and they will have multiple points, uh, touch points yeah. that will be based on the problem. So, how do you come up with those touch points, and how do you diagnose the you know problem correctly and validate yourself that yes, that is the right problem to solve and go ahead with the execution? We, we measure the metrics around it. Let's say in the Swiggy problem, I'll understand how many users left us because the customer service was bad as compared to how many users left us because the delivery was slower or, or, or how many users less left us because it was difficult to order uh, a particular um, dish on the app or from the app. Um, understand, let's say people, only 100 people a day leave us for bad customer support, but 2000 people a day leave Swiggy for, because uh, it's difficult to order uh, a dish. I understand that, yeah, this is a bigger problem. So I understand both are problems, but the problem where 2000 people are leaving us, uh, that's the bigger uh, fish to catch here. Okay, 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 thank you. Yeah. So, so actually my question was based around this only like, uh, you, uh, that Swiggy wants to improve user retention. You mentioned about the metrics as well. How the metrics are defined actually at first place? So, uh, as a product manager or a business team, there are some things that you would want to measure. Um, for example, uh, I am creating a new product right now. And in the discovery phase, uh, even before we are building it, we want to understand that how will we measure the success of this product that you're building? Um, is it the number of sales? Is it the number of people who ordered something? Is it uh, is because of the feature, the cart size is increasing? So uh, those metrics are decided before a product is built. So like Swiggy would have some uh, metrics at different level that they want to understand the total sales, weekly sales, daily active users, monthly active users, cart size, et cetera. And uh, business team and product managers have an eye on these metrics. And whenever something goes up or down, um, they know that something has gone wrong. And that's when they understand that, okay, uh, you know, something is going bad here. We need to build something to fix it. So does product manager defines those metrics? Is it, or is it like it's the business team? Yes. The business uh, team defines it and product manager has no, the responsibility. No, uh, they work in tandem and uh, they, they work in tandem and they agree that this is the metric that we want to uh, capture and see. There is some extremely product metrics like daily active user, uh, monthly active users. And then there are metrics like um, total cash, cash flow generated in a day or total revenue uh, by one area in a day. Business might be interested in this, while product might be interested more in monthly or daily active users. So that's how they come up with. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a discussion, and that's when people decide that, hey, we want to measure this metric. Okay, okay. thank you. Cool. Now, moving on to the next slide. Um, so we just discussed the entire product management uh, or product life cycle flow. Um, and these were the different stages on the left and the skills required are on the right. Uh, whatever you see, which is marked in orange is something that all of, I mean, that we agreed that a business analyst needs to do. And you also mentioned a lot of these skills earlier. Um, now, if you want to become a product manager or move from a business analyst to a product manager, it's extremely important that the skills required that you have on the right hand side are those other are skills that you have or you have projects around these skills in your resume 
for example, I think someone asked me that uh, what are the different frameworks that you use? I mean, you can Google it and understand, but it's extremely important for you to understand these frameworks, use it once and have it in your CV because so 80% of the recruitment in India is done through Nokri. Um, when uh, HR or uh, or someone who wants to source a product manager goes through Nokri, they would just search these skills, even if you're a business analyst, uh, but you have these skills, all these skills in, in your resume, there are extremely high chances that your resumes will be shortlisted. So when I first started applying for product jobs, this was uh, November, October, 2020, I couldn't get any shortlisting. I wasn't shortlisted anywhere. And uh, uh, maybe through one or two referrals, I was able to get calls, but I mean, they were a disaster. Um, but once I started including these terms, the number of calls increased rapidly. I mean, they were up to like five or six calls in a um, in a week, so which is pretty great. Now, um, going through the different stages and the skill required, and how can you get that? Uh, the first one is identifying problems. So I think most of you already know a lot about it because that's what you do: try to understand what problems your customers face and then uh, getting the crux out of it. So that shouldn't be a problem for you as business analyst. Uh, one thing is understand, uh, and I think I forgot to mention here, understand how to make surveys, how to create surveys, how to conduct interviews. Um, in a lot of interviews I've been asked, uh, what kind of survey do you want to run or what kind of questions would you want to ask? Um, so that's extremely important. Going to prioritization, there are extremely technical product management skills known as RICE, Effort versus Impact, or Moscow. These are different frameworks that a product manager uses while coming up with uh, uh, the right problem to solve. Uh, now, Effort versus Impact is simply like, how much effort would it take me to get what impact? If it requires a lot of effort to um, create something and the impact is low, obviously I wouldn't want to prioritize it as compared to if the effort is less but the impact is high i want to prioritize it so this way there are multiple frameworks there are seven or eight frameworks um out there and you're usually asked how do you prioritize a feature in a given product so you can list two or three of them after reading and talk about um hey i've used this in the past or i know about this uh, then there's something known as moscow must have could have uh, multiple frameworks important to know that um again one question that i keep on getting and i got uh, multiple times was um, have you done road mapping? Do you know different frameworks to create a roadmap? Um, how would you create a roadmap? Um, as during product manager interviews, the, the most questions I got was from uh, frameworks around prioritization and road mapping. So that's something you need to, uh, I think, read through technically, uh, I mean, read, read through a lot, extremely important. Um, next, while identifying solutions is important that you know how to conduct an A-B a testing, uh, understand how to create prototypes know a little bit of ux ui as well and uh, a lot of people ask me that hey what are the technical skills to be a product manager um you need to understand how apis work what is the front end what is what is the back end how do they communicate um in the present organization that you're in or the product that you're working what is the front end what is the back end um etc sit with your engineers or sit your, with your friends who are engineers help you know ask them they'll help you understand this understand how internet works, understand how different databases work. Um, these things help a lot. No one will go into a lot of technicality, but um, uh, this helps in the job. You won't get such questions. I mean, once I was asked, um, can you please tell me uh, how, how does an API work or what does an API do? So it helps to know all of these terms, but no one will ask you this in detail. You really don't need to understand how to code or you don't need to be an extremely good coder to um to become a product manager no one expects you to do that but what they expect you to know is do you understand how things work uh, if you're coming up with a feature do you even understand if that can be made or not or do you have the sense to talk to an engineer you don't want to overload an engineer can you empathize with them because um i mean attrition is usually high and you really don't want um to uh, to come out, come across as a fool, uh, you know, uh, in front of your engineering team. Now, again, UX UI skills extremely important. Um, how to how do you create a PRD? How can be a uh, PRD is a product requirement document. That is the document that you use, uh, and you give it to an engineering team. 
using that they understand that oh sorry uh it, it basically has uh everything that you want to be built that you want something that has to be built and uh, that you give to the engineers and they make user stories on that or the other people who make user stories or you make a user story in different organizations it works differently um a lot of questions come around hey how do you work with an engineer how is it different by while working with a designer can you write a user story uh, do you know agile do you know uh, what is a user story do you know what is an epic do you know um um yeah basically these things things around agile user stories have you worked on jira before um have you do you know what is a user story do you know how to write a user story um so these are the questions that come up and you need to know these things uh, if you want to uh, crack a pm interview agile comes up always like can you explain agile methodology can you please tell me why agile and why not um waterfall etc um again during the release launch phase is extremely important that you understand the revenue model because you need to have one eye on the business sense because uh, you would want to know how does this feature creates or gets you more revenue or what is the business impact of this revenue uh, and it just helps when you are talking about this with the marketing and the sales team you need to understand where does your product position so that the sales team or the marketing team can run ads or campaigns accordingly at the same time uh, while releasing or launching you are working with your engineering team because they are making the stuff you are working with sales you are working with marketing and it requires a lot of stakeholder management which i think most of you do already and then while measuring and collecting feedback uh, you should have a good understanding on how can you uh, you know what are the things that you want to measure what are the different dashboards that you want what are the different reports that you want so that you can ask your analytics team or create those reports yourself and understand um is the product really going where i want it to go um and and that helps right um yeah any uh okay i'll just take the questions later um little bit from my story um as i mentioned when i first started applying uh, i was getting no calls um changed my cv multiple times had to go through multiple iterations and add skill sets and it's not just about adding skill sets you can't add things that you don't know uh you need to build those skill sets like i mentioned you might have a lot of these skill sets here and might not have a lot of these skill sets here which is completely okay but the idea is that you you understand what you have and you build what you don't have and add it in your cv how can you build that you can uh maybe make a product yourself through a no, uh, you know no code website or or you can help a friend who's starting a startup or you can join a course like i did and um you know build those things that you don't have actually um so that you know you understand it and i i think bas and product managers are very similar it's a very similar role it's just that you need to run you know you need to um you need to position yourself accordingly uh and once you know technicalities around what a product manager does like the ones i mentioned here you can learn these things and apply it um next very important thing is let's say if you are in a b2b industry you really um you know it's easier for you to move into a b2b role if you're into let's say uh if you're into e-commerce and b2c as a business analyst maybe it's easier for you to move uh, and become a product manager um in an e-commerce role uh in a b2c company so it's very important understand where you come come from understand uh what are the right what are the industry what industry knowledge do you come up with and prioritize those companies because it's easier for you because you bring relevant industry experience and the other company might be very benefited by that so keep that in mind next um there are no theoretical questions in a uh, in a product management interview like you are not asked that um le let's say hey can you tell me different prioritization frameworks no you will be asked can you talk about a time when you had to uh when you had to prioritize something at work and um, that's when you know you have to come i mean you uh, you have to relate it back to a story that you have that hey there was a time when i was supposed to do this and i used this framework and i did this 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 and this was the result um so all of these questions i mean with whatever questions you are asked in a product management interview try and not answer it theoretically but try and answer them uh in a way so that the person across the table understand that hey this person knows this shit and he has actually built it so if you give a theoretical answer that might not work but if you tell that hey there was a time when i was um you know when i had to ab test something these were the two scenarios that i wanted to test and then that's what i did 
they would know that this person actually knows what he's talking about. He has done it and he's speaking not out of a Google page, but out of his own experience. So that helps create more stories um, around your, um, uh, you know, around different things uh, about which you can be asked questions around. Um, so uh, luckily I was writing down questions that I was asked across a lot of companies. Um, these includes a lot of unicorns from India, uh, includes few companies uh, from uh, other countries as well. And almost every question was asked more than once. Um, people ask you, what's your motivation to be a product manager? When someone asked me that, I'm like, hey, I'm, I, it's not that I'm not a product manager. I'm already doing this, 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 and this. Uh, and hence, I think I'm a product manager. They ask you your experience around building a product. And that's why I said uh, it's extremely important to maybe build something or or uh, do workshop or join a course where you actually um, do something like this. Uh, people ask you, how do you deal with engineers? And, and that's where you come, you know, you should speak with your experience and not just theoretical experience. Uh, again, uh, these questions are, I mean, you can take a screenshot if you want to, if you want to, I can just mail the presentation to you later on. Um, but yeah, these are the kind of questions that you guessed, uh, uh, that you are asked. And the reason I'm listing this is, uh, so that you know it's not completely theoretical and you might already answer uh, or you might already know answer to a lot of these questions and might not know answer to a lot of these questions so focus on what you know that's great but build on what you do not know as a product manager and um, and just learn that any any questions uh, let's just open it i think we're already 45 minute 45 minutes into the session uh, hi, Ayush. I have a question. Hi. Uh, so, um, you know, if you go to your skill set uh, slide. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think something Daddy. is uh, missing. I mean, again, it's my interest uh, because I've, I've been following it on. I mean, I'm a BA for quite a, quite a long time, but I was just looking into, you know, how PM is different. So I think what makes a PM different from BA is also metrics. I mean, we never hear about, I mean, as, at least me and my, you know, people who all BA, we never deal with metrics like NPS or, um, you know, churn, all these things. I mean, so metrics is something, and I, I also under, uh, I also came to know from somebody that uh, metrics questions do come in in particular. So, they, they do. So as a BA, as a BA, we are not familiar with those metrics, right? So we, uh, where do you think is the best place to learn about the metrics that we can use? Not today, I mean, not 10 years back, today as in today's world. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm questioning. Yeah, you, you get questions like, uh, so I've like mentioned few of these here and this is what I got. I mean, this is the one I got for, from Dream11. Uh, this was, how would you measure the success of Instagram stories? Um, it's a pretty normal question and uh, they expect you to list down metrics and those metrics why. Uh, I would say in YouTube, there's this um, there's this channel known as I think Product School and they keep coming up with these interview uh, questions around metrics. Just go to Google or YouTube and type down. Um, I, I know product school. Questions so around they have, yeah. Do they have good, good videos on this? Yeah, yeah they, they do. Uh, I, uh, I mean, um, for all these questions out there that you are asked, you will find answers in Google. You'll find people narrating the answers. Uh, there's a method to it. There's a definite method on how do you answer this metric question. There are multiple frameworks to answer them. So just go and learn those frameworks. Um, and I mean, to start with, it's great that you already uh, know that you don't know metrics. Just go and learn out there. It's, it's simple. Okay, thanks. Hi, Anish. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, I'm just building my uh, analytical skills. I mean, uh, I'm basically a technical writer moving on to uh, PM gradually. So I just wanted to know uh, how, uh, how how important it is, I mean, learning ANOVA or some uh, data analytics with Python in com I mean, compared with uh, predictive analysis tools like uh, linear regression and all. So as a product manager, you don't need to know uh, how linear regression works or what is ANOVA or what is a P-test, Z-test. Um, what you need to understand is uh, the data you want or uh, the data you would use to measure something. You maybe just need to understand that, hey, I want 
someone to focus these numbers for me so that I can understand, do I need to build this? But you don't need to know hands-on uh, data analytics major, at least not a blocker. Um, I wouldn't spend a lot of time building those technical skills. It's just okay to understand what can be done. It's important to understand what is customer segmentation. Uh, how can you do it? You can you can do it by some clustering algorithms or uh, how, how can I predict if some user is going to buy my product or not? You can maybe build some classification models, but you don't build it. I mean, as a product manager, you ask your analytics or the data science team to do it. So it's not very important to know the details, but it's important to know the applications, uh, what something does, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Thank you.